Hello, welcome to the 94th episode of the Karscast movie cast. Jeff, real quick, what is measured in watts? <laughs> What's <laughs> measured in... That's what the question gave. It's you know all we have to work with. To my, my good friend and our, our guest, guest today. Uh, yeah. Like Kevin <laughs> Hurley. A good way of... <laughs> it is power, which yeah, I guess, okay. you know, it's the same thing. I don't know thing. where you're getting these trivia questions. I get them from an app. I cannot, I don't have the time to look it up right now, but uh, <laughs> they're a hit or miss. But anyways. Uh, but anyways, yeah, welcome, uh, Kevin. It's It's been a while since I've talked to you. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. How do you and, uh, how do you and Jeff know each other? Right off the bat. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and uh, you you just had a kid, right? Like right before the school like started. <laughs> so then you always I would just talk to you for like three minutes as you walked out the door to go immediately home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, you didn't really miss much. <laughs> uh, not not anyone not that we a know. Ton, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this is just for my mother. This is a Patreon episode for our one patron, who is Jeff's. Mother. Just to be clear, yes. it's not a Patreon episode. This this will be heard this by is... <laughs> probably four, four thousand five hundred people. Yeah very exact not Um, not a single one more than that (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i we usually just start off by kind of asking you guys how your week's been yeah they're all the same yeah yeah i mean yeah It, it could have been (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i want to say that um since i last actually like saw you because we text like fairly frequently but mm-hmm. um you're you have a new haircut yeah oh it looks nice that's what <laughs> yeah I've been cutting my own hair for, like, years at this point. Um, and the thing that people don't understand is it's kind of fun. Um, so I used to have, like, where I used to live in that coach house, I had, um, like, the bathroom had, like, a fold-out, like, three-side, like, mirror thing. So it would be, like, flat, and then the sides would fold out like this. So you could kind of, like, turn your head and look. But now I just, uh, I guess. You know... I'll disagree with. I think the only thing I get out of it is the adrenaline because I shaved my head back in April and it was a pretty miserable experience to be honest. I was like cutting in too deep and like had all these like patches by the end of it. But I mean, it was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, cause it, as soon, the day I shaved it, I was like, "Oh, I don't actually look that bad with a buzzed head." But it was like a week or two later when things started growing back in. I was like, "Oh, this is this is a problem." Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, that, but the thing is, I don't go anywhere, so it's like, right, it doesn't really matter. But I will say, this week I did cut my hair, but I decided to only cut the sides and see what it looked like. I was gonna and say, I, I totally look like a turnip. Like, it's just, like, insane looking. It's really funny. 
but I did it because it's because it's just like I've like I've never tried to only cut the sides before. So it's like right. the sides are super short, and then the top is just like all there. You, you kind of pull it off though. I feel like you have the head shape to the head shape. do that. <laughs> I don't know. the tall head, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm like with my hair this high. I'm like six foot five now. So yeah <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna like here's my skull i don't know i'm gonna push it down it's like uh, i don't know what that says about like my relationships or something right yeah um well with i guess we we have a busy yeah. episode this is a double we, yeah. feature before we get into it because it is double feature carson but i just have a question for kevin for sure what is in all of the things behind you mm. those are movies Which was pre-COVID, just to be very clear. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was yeah. pre-anything locking down. Pre-March, yeah. It was like maybe February or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> like a library? Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Okay, how many movies would you say you own physical copies of? Just ballpark. Wow, Jesus. <laughs> See, Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> See, Carson, this is why I invited Kevin. <laughs> he is he's the he's movie. He's seen guy. some things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, real quick, and then we'll get into the movies. Is one of the physical copies you own Ishtar? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did but i think it was my copy i brought over wait do you own my copy did i never get it back <laughs> <laughs> um all right which one are we trying to get into first here i was thinking we'd start with a serious man Cause and then we can. That's what I was thinking too. So I Kevin, think it's... were you on the same page? Awesome. Okay, for a second you started shaking your head no. So I thought you were like mm, not <laughs> doing like, that. Wow. Yeah, I was like we can start with the other one. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, we'll start with a serious man then. Uh, this is a 2009 film directed by the Coen Brothers. Have you heard of them? Uh, and the synopsis is uh. Larry is a physics professor at a 1960s university, but his life is coming apart at the seams. His wife is leaving him, his jobless brother has moved in, and someone is trying to sabotage his chances for tenure. Larry seeks advice from three different rabbis, but whether anyone can help him overcome his many difficulties remains to be seen. I mean, that's about as... That's a pretty... That's pretty specific. That's pretty much what we can get, yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you read them, and they're, they're like one sentence right it's like that's the blood those empty ran away from home one. yeah um but yeah i want to start by asking because usually we let the guests pick the movies for our episodes and this was one and of we your... did do that this time we did do that to, this time as yeah. well <laughs> You're like, usually we let it but usually you know we let what? it happen Screw kevin. this time we were like <laughs> we'll take care of it uh kevin why because i'm just because it's from 2009 why was this on the mind to discuss today if there was any reason at all. Mm hmm Mm hmm
Yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> I like how you finished that saying, I don't know, and you gave the most comprehensive answer anyone's ever given. <laughs> and it included you listening to an entire one of our episodes to then parse the fact that we had not seen it. So that was, yeah. a, well, that was a very good reason. What Would you consider this to be your favorite Coen Brothers movie, or is it uh, is it just up there? Mm-hmm. Because Karsten and I share a favorite. It's Inside Lewin Davis, right? Yes. Yeah. So good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, where it's not like you have the protagonist and they're like, eh, screw this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. Also, I feel like you can't be mean to Oscar Isaac. Right. Especially when he has a cat I don't think the involved. audience would forgive it's... you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm glad we influenced you. <laughs> yeah. I will say, like, getting back to this one, I also think this, and this is my second time watching it, like, it's so different compared to everything else they've done, in a way. Because I'm so, the thing that I associate with them is that it's so easy to, I think, follow, it's so easy to get wrapped up in their stories. Like, they take away so much meat and make it very just easy to lose yourself in their movies like fargo i think is the best example of that mm -hmm. um and this is like it's not as clear i think as far as the story arc goes but it's just as hypnotic like i i lose myself in this every time i watch it and it's so i i didn't want it to be over but at the same time i was like this is so painful <laughs> like bad things just keep happening to this man Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think, I think 2009. That, yeah, I was about to say anything okay. over 10 years old, I feel pretty safe. Yeah. 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 Insane. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, because I'm a, a massive simpleton, uh, every time I watch movies, for some reason I always have like, I think of like the vibe of the film and like the experience watching it and I kind of compare those to other things I've seen recently. And this gave me a similar sensation to watching Dead Poet Society. Just in, in and I will explain that. What if I just <laughs> left it there? I was like, I, I just okay. mean that it's, such an engaging like slice of life type film to watch but i hate every single thing that's happening yeah <laughs> mm 
I'm like, I really, like, a tiny part of me, like, wants to turn it off. Yeah. But you can't. Yeah. Right, and I... <laughs> right. And I'm like, you know what? Once they didn't have that laugh track, that guy was way less funny. <laughs> Um, yeah. You know what? I had a. I never asked my rabbi for like advice, but when I was younger, like I had a synagogue that we went to, and the rabbi actually, if I'm remembering this correctly, he got fired for using the rabbi discretionary fund for like his own stuff. Huh. But here's the thing: I was kind of like it's called the rabbi discretionary fund. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah i yeah. mean fair enough i mean if he <laughs> thinks that should be used for a new kitchen who am i to judge <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think so um and i'm gonna just i don't really remember all the specifics so if someone else someone tracks this back i'm gonna say allegedly yeah <laughs> You get in a lot of trouble for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, is, is this libel or slander? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, I while we're comparing this to other movies, I want to say like <laughs> the get on the compare train. Right. Uh. This the same. Okay. This came out the same year as Synecdoche, New York, which I think is kind of funny because I especially after. Before, the first time I saw this, I hadn't seen Cynics in New York, and they're kind of pretty similar, in my opinion. Just the in both the tone and just how fast they both work. Like, they both have a lot of these scenes where the main character, Larry, he's just, like, kind of in the middle of the room, and, like, five different people are yelling at him about, like, five different things. And I'm like, that this could be a scene out of Cynics in New York. And that's such a unique thing that I don't see in a lot of movies, and just thought mm. it was interesting yeah i don't know there's also a lot of jews in new york <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so just you know they're even closer related. right 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 right. <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> populated uh <laughs> yeah um what else i do want to mention the cinematography i think this is like one of my favorite things that roger deakins has shot i mean it is mm -hmm. beautiful from like beginning to end and it's got this minty look to it in every shot that i don't know i i got a lot out of that especially those parking lot shots i mean those are very yeah. pretty to look at i mean i don't know if i've ever seen a parking lot portrayed <laughs> as beautifully as in this film yeah right, right. jolly roger was cool i, I love like motels from the 60s <laughs> yeah mid-century modern like all over the place in this film it's it's a, okay it's a very good period piece of this film in terms of just how the 60s are portrayed yeah Mm -hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like, he uses the Dutch angle at one point during the. I forget what the word is. The molding mouth whatever scene with the teeth uh i don't know my dentist terminology but uh that whole scene was very that's that's probably my favorite part of the entire film um just the way it brings you in and and takes you out and he's like he said something like uh, is that it and he's like well yeah why are you telling me this then um i don't know i yeah yeah <laughs> i 
yeah, there's just a lot of those moments, and you brought this up earlier, where you can't really tell if you're supposed to be laughing or not, and it's, like, a really hilarious thing happening within a, like, concerning, or I guess that that's not a great example. There's nothing that concerning about that one, but a lot of, like, dramatic scenes that just, at, at a certain point, they're just funny, you know? Yeah, okay. And some scenes, though, are just only funny. Like, they're not even dramatic, just, like, everything involving the bribe yeah yeah <laughs> like it was like a schrodinger's cat joke within the whole like it was about a test on schrodinger's cat and then they do a schrodinger's cat with the bribe <laughs> yeah oh Cy, well, I know it's Cy Abelman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just have, like, the gaslighting of, like, where he should move. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, I didn't even ask. Is this your, this was your first time this seeing This was my it, right? first time seeing this, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, what was your general, like, impression of it, like... As yeah, a first time I mean, watch. <laughs> you it definitely felt like a Coen Brothers film, in to me, just in terms of, of, I think I don't know, just like the, the general like, interpersonal like, connectivity of everything and how it kind of, I don't know, just like the the general Coen Brothers like web type feeling of like interconnectedness in the film, mm -hmm. and and the dark definitely the dark humor, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, I think I, this is just a great example of how easy they make their filmmaking look in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, every time I watch one of their movies and I kind of brought this up earlier, I'm just like, that's, it's so simple. Like why does, why yeah, does anyone like, why over complicate do things? Yeah. No, this I, is I was such thinking a good that, of that. <laughs> besides the, the, like the period piece elements, which of course would be incredibly expensive to replicate the actual on like what's happening on screen wouldn't really cost that much to do it's just the way that you know it's set up is just like it makes it feel like a blockbuster film even though there's nothing there's obviously no explosions yeah happening here it's not my, we're not talking michael bay i know that's kevin's <laughs> favorite director um <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of one of the things is just all different editions of Armageddon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Right, and it's like he goes to rabbis, and like that does not help. <clears throat> I will just say that like Larry is one of my favorite, I think, Coen Brothers protagonists as a like out there, because uh, I think he's he toes that line of being extremely universal and realistic, but also just kind of exaggerated. Like obviously, I mean, I maybe I can't speak on this like no this many bad things don't happen to a person this <laughs> quickly but at the same time they kind of do and it feels like that and i think they just really balanced that super well with his character but mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind of like a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> He's like walking through the haunted house and things just pop out at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like instead of it being like a mummy that pops out, it's like a mummy that's like wearing like a pearl necklace. He's like, what? <laughs> Wait, okay. It's like, I kind of get this. <laughs> it's just like in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. <laughs> mhm. Absolutely. Yeah. How much did you want to punch his son when he talked about the the <laughs> antenna signal? <laughs> 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 Mm. yeah <laughs> i looked up that actor because i was like what else has this kid been in and he really he's not an actor he's like a celloist based out of minnesota and i i just thought your I was neighbor like, yeah basically i'm like <laughs> but yeah um i don't know i i'm pretty does anyone else have any like closing thoughts on this um or any like big things they want to point out before we want to, yeah. Kevin, we know you could talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah for sure they're very unpredictable but at the same time you know exactly what you're gonna get which is i don't know i should have my dad watched this film i just realized that he would have that's like literally he grew up in like the late 60s in a jewish community (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, yeah. So what's everybody feeling for a rating? Out of we usually do it out of five by like half. It's like the letterbox thing. Mm-hmm. Uh I gave this a four and a half personally. I there's like very few things wrong with it for me, and I could watch it most days. Like I just get so much out of it. So mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, probably four four and a half. But uh Yeah, I gave it a four. Well, what's wrong with it, Jeff? Why? Why? You know, why not that I extra don't think aspect? I don't think I could watch it most days. <laughs> it's a little, a little heavy for me. Understood. Okay, just the the beginning of this film uh, reminded me because obviously I hadn't seen this before, but it just reminded me of American Pickle. Okay, I was the, gonna the ask the Rogan film. That's why that was. That's why that was my review on Letterbox. Was an American Pickle. I was like, is it because they both are like a uh, blank? blank in the no, title it's well, it's like well it's because like the beginning <laughs> scenes are very similar right um, right they also have similar names they're also like the two most jewish films ever made <laughs> yeah <laughs> um cool yeah well, that was that was really about as far as i got for why yeah. that was my review yeah. <laughs> i was like this has layers to it we can get into it yeah, it's two, um, two layers yeah well we can move on to the next film which personally i'm pretty excited to talk about it is yep, much Bible more... goes west. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Tangerine Bear again. The, the third most Jewish film ever made. Bible <laughs> Mouskowitz. <laughs> um, 
but that that is not the film. That is not the film. The next film <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets. It is a documentary that came out this last year. I believe it premiered at Sundance. Um, it's directed by Bill Ross and Turner Ross. Uh, and the synopsis reads, Patrons and staff enjoy their last night in a Las Vegas bar that's shutting down. Very simple synopsis for this one. Not yeah, pretty does accurate. not get specific, but um, similar. I want to ask the same question, Kevin. Uh, why? Because, okay, I've heard some things about this one. I've been meaning to watch it. And I'm very curious as to why uh, this was also on the mind. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. totally yeah i'm definitely i will say like super curious to check out more of what they've done like besides this um because this was cool uh but yeah i'm curious what was everybody's like general thoughts on it jeff kevin uh, okay and... so my initial thoughts were just from understanding like the premise mm-hmm. was it reminded me of that nathan for you episode <laughs> <laughs> like the no smoking yeah um or, or was it was that what it's called anyways you know what i'm talking about yeah and uh, yeah was, yeah something like that yeah smoking aloud um but <laughs> yeah but watching it 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 was a very strange like the pacing of it somehow worked even though it was just very (laughs) oddly paced for a documentary where you know what i'm gonna i'm just gonna keep gathering my thoughts on this while i let kevin (laughs) explain it better (laughs) there you go see that's yeah that's 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 it (laughs) Mm-hmm. Right. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Mhm. yeah for sure yeah have you either of you been to bars that feel like this um not i mean in what way are you in in the way where (laughs) it just feels like a very like incredibly local bar that has like a bunch of regulars and it's like so obviously most of the bars that young people go to in chicago are not like this at all yeah well, that's the thing, because I've I've only really been or frequented bars in Chicago, and I'm like, they're yeah. not like oh. this, to be honest. Oh, yeah, that, the uh, thing is that <laughs> I w- it's probably a good thing that you haven't been to <laughs> right. many bars like this. <laughs> but I actually was at one bar that reminded me like this with Kevin in Champaign, oh. Illinois. <laughs> Th- didn't that feel like this?
which Dude, yeah, which definitely happens in this film. Yeah, I will. Like, it's crazy how much of a night I feel like I had in mm-hmm. just ninety minutes of watching this. Especially like near the end, I start to feel it because it it gets like it hits every point where it's like everyone's dancing and at the peak drunkness in a way and then there's like the cool down when everyone's leaving there's that build beforehand i'm like i really felt like i was i (laughs) was there with them throughout yeah i seen this film it was the last night but i felt like i understood what every night was like there Mm -hmm. yeah Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And also the way it was edited because just because the nature of of people um especially at a bar I would think. Um you know there were moments where people like were staring at the cameras and like probably doing stuff in front of the camera like to a camera and the fact that they were able to cut all of that stuff and make it feel like a true fly on the wall thing mm-hmm. where it didn't feel like anyone was inhibited by the fact that there was a film crew is what i think completely made it work at all on any level because yeah. i mean if it felt like these people were acting differently but it they they just didn't it just felt like every single night there well okay kevin i want to hear what you have to say because i read somewhere that this was filmed over the course of like a few nights apparently but i don't get that because how did they is do you know if that's true or not because i heard you say you knew something about the production i don't know much about it okay yeah Mhm. Mhm. Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I just read that like it was shot over the course of like four days, and that's all I really saw. I didn't, I don't know much about this going into it. Um, but that just made I'm like, did they ask these people to come in the same clothes or something? Like, what did, how did, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's a it's a very from a, like a technical and logistical level. It's a very interesting film because like you could tell that some of the stuff had to be staged, but I just couldn't. From upon watching it parse like to what extent because it it felt very real the entire time but i'm like some of the ways this is playing out there has to be like some level of instruction given mm-hmm. but you really i don't know I, I don't know about you but i couldn't really figure out what was yeah, happening totally Yep. Mhm. Mhm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah, blazer guy because the the blazer guy wanted to fight the guy who looked like Einstein, mm-hmm. and then the musician tattoo guy was the one who stepped in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of the, I guess the part that felt the most like a non-doc was, uh, who are, I forget the main guy's name with the long hair. Michael? Yeah. A lot of his scenes felt the most like planned or scripted, but I still didn't really have a problem with them because he really was like the emotional root of the film. And I, I, I guess like he was... Just I, I I felt I empathized with him the most, be, it, probably because I wasn't drunk, or, as drunk as everybody else was. Um, but just those moments where like everybody's kind of like hanging out and up here, and he walks up next to the camera at some point and he just like starts cussing to himself and then walks off. I'm like that's that felt very real and <laughs> like reminded me like I I think a bit of the humanity that's not there when everyone's drunk. I don't know. Uh, But he was just a really fascinating character to me. Especially the fact that his ending was, like, super abrupt and he just kind of stormed out. Um, Did any... Okay, I want to ask, did you see uh, Lover's Rock, Kevin? That's... Okay. That's the one movie that, like, this kind of reminded me of, even though that was not a documentary at all. And they're both completely different films. Um, But it's just funny that... You're on the reminding you of other films train. I really am. I <laughs> I started that train and we're just running it's, with it's it. It's weird. It is weird that both of these came out the same year too because they are super similar. That one is also just about a party that happens and you totally feel like you're at the party. And I don't know what it is about those movies that they just they click and they're really working this year, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm insane yeah and the one here is great too it's super not what i was expecting um (laughs) okay that is the one thing i was really curious about is because i mean as everyone like knows who does any kind of filmmaking recording audio of conversations when there's songs playing in the background just like makes everything really weird yeah and i'm wondering like did they have like what was the actual music being played while this happened did they how much did they add in later or was it all just actual ambient like music well there's certain parts where i know uh there's a gucci main song that plays at some point and everybody's like singing along to it so i'm like it had to be playing at the bar so they had there's that case Mm -hmm. but i agree there's like thriller or beat it at some point plays and i'm like there's just like certain cases where i'm like i can see this being added in later yeah and then also all the tv sound i think they added in later because like that's sometimes it was super loud and it didn't make any sense because it didn't look like yep. they had like a microphone there to like switch totally. to like the mix around mm. mm-hmm Mm. yeah (laughs) yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's 
I think it was mixed incredibly well because like that's what made us feel like we were there at the bar was how they mix the conversations and everyone's voices so that it felt like you were like right next to them yeah i mean which obviously like on a technical level you have to love every single person and then like it's kind of weird because then obviously you know everyone is very aware that they're loved but i don't know it's i don't understand really how this film worked (laughs) in the way that it worked but it, it did yeah Oh, the, the movie comparing, comparing to train. Yeah. Faces. Yeah. That is so I true. Think both of you yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That whole scene, it's like all in like one shot where he's talking to the guy with the tattoos on his eyelids. That was one of my favorite parts of the movie. I'm like, this is crazy. Uh, even if it wasn't real and that was scripted, it was a very tender moment. Um, but, okay, have has you seen uh, Hands on a Hard Body, Kevin, by chance? It's this other documentary. I know in like some random interview quentin tarantino labeled that as like his favorite doc and i'm like this is so similar just because it's like that specific it's like because that's like about these it's a group of people who would leave their hands on a car long enough to want to take that car home and stuff it's like one of those competitions and this is kind of in the same vein of like the kinds of characters that would be at a bar like this and would be regulars at a bar like this it's just I think they're both really great portraits of that side of America. And I'm like, that's why my letterbox review was, I feel like Tarantino would love this movie. Cause Dude, it, also, <laughs> it seems like Tarantino, the, the, the musician kind of looked like Tarantino. He did, dude. I, <laughs> I was thinking that as well. I was like, wow. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Mhm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the more we're talking about this, the more I'm appreciating it. <laughs> like, yeah. I, that was just a, there's a lot of moments that I think went over my head because I was trying too hard to figure out what the movie was. And I think I'm just, I'm comfortable leaning into that and accepting it as this, like, mystery that is so, like, well thought out and smoothed that, like, it just feels. Not even like a movie. It, it feels like you're just like looking through all these clips from one night. And yeah, I, th- I think that's really cool. Um, but does anyone have any like closing thoughts on it before we we move on? Or Jeff, Kevin? It, no? it kind of, you know, <laughs> I do understand why Kevin uh, picked this film and that it does kind of feel like something Kevin would make. yeah because the a little bit it did feel like the film that you made in terms of like this i don't know just like in terms of the like semi 
documentary style like just general like feeling of it where where it's yes the thesis film which i don't remember what it's called i have seen a cut of it yeah which was like pretty similar right Yeah, because the, the scene I remember most from that was um, the one, like, outside on the street where the, like, the actress was talking to that guy. Um, yeah. Like, that, and that one was not scripted. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, it feels very intentional the only time i felt that was during the really long scene where he was playing guitar where that you could tell that they wanted to be on uh, i forget the the main emotional old guy but his name where they you could tell they wanted to be on him and then the guy like kept blocking them so he had to like move over and then <laughs> when he moved then he moved back on that guy but other than that yeah i totally agree yeah for sure uh, yeah um real quick kevin so is your thesis is not available to view yet, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. When it's available, let me know. I'm I'm gonna send people <laughs> to it from. <laughs> so you'll get you'll get about four people to see it. Yeah. From this podcast. <laughs> Not total. You're on more than that total. This is the beginning um, of the press tour for it. Yeah. It's coming on uh, here. <laughs> do you have any other things to promote while we're at it? sure it was one of the more yeah that was a thoughtful plug yeah compared to <laughs> most of yeah right 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 yeah yeah <laughs> cool um so what are we feeling up for a score for this one before we move into questions uh, uh i feel like i'm at a four again that's where i'm at yeah i was at a three and a half and just the more i i think about the movie and talk about it i do i really want to watch it again to be honest yes yeah. like which is not what i was expecting i would watch this movie again uh <laughs> so i'm feeling a four
Nice. You know. We also do uh we didn't do this for a serious man but we're we're known for some reason i don't remember why this happened but we do a time of day rating where it's like the optimal time of day to watch the film i like this rating system personally i don't think jeff likes it that much yeah but <laughs> okay we'll, we'll just do both films <laughs> right now real quick so a serious man i think that one i don't know i think 9 p.m feels like a good time to watch it because it's yeah. like late enough to where you kind of can get into that like compliment or uh just like thinking about contemplating life yeah i just after prime time it's also like kind of a noon movie to me i can see you watching that in the middle of the day and then maybe moving on from there but maybe that's just home from synagogue right right (laughs) sure yeah i don't see why not it's a (laughs) rainy day movie yeah yeah Right, and Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets is that's that's late night. That's a late night movie, I would say, like an eleven. I don't know if I'd go midnight, but yeah, I think eleven thirty. Then it ends like just after one a.m. Right, right. Um, clear skies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll move on to uh, we'll move on to the Q and A. These we'll bust through these. Uh, these come from the subreddit, uh, but they also come from the Patreon. Um, which we will plug later. Um, this first one comes from $15 patron Micah Simmons, and it is, what are your favorite film scores slash soundtracks? Um, we've been asked this one many times, Jeff. I feel I feel but like I get asked it often. wasn't here when last time exactly. we probably vaguely answered this. It's Kevin. Kevin. The movie expert. <laughs> film professor. <laughs> Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like iconic. Yeah. For sure. Um, I'll answer. I, I give a different answer every time. So for now, I'll just say uh, the score I've been listening to a lot is the Kajillionaire score by Emil Mosseri. He also did the Minari score, which is also beautiful. He had a great year. And the Kajillionaire score is fantastic. And as for a soundtrack, I listen to the Climax soundtrack very regularly. It's it's very fun. Um, so, yeah that's that's my answer yeah no No. i've talked about it more than any other movie to be honest but i i feel bad forcing jeff to sit through it (laughs) to be honest Uh, i don't want jeff to go through it yeah maybe we we'll just have kevin back on (laughs) yeah really oh man i've (laughs) do you like it kevin Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. So to answer the question, uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like the the way I have to answer this question is just something of all the films I've seen in the last couple of months. Like, what one is my favorite? So I think my favorite score of films I've seen in the last like two months is The Social Network. Yeah, that's a that's a classic yeah also for yeah i also always love the stranger things soundtrack is like that's just like a fun one to listen to mm-hmm. it's not really technically a film yeah but i mean i don't care about it's a good one yeah technicalities <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool um well this next one comes from uh nick underscore name and it is if you if you were aware you were going to die tomorrow and you had to write a will list ASAP, what valuable possession would you give and who would take both of your channels? I guess that one applies to the last part of that applies to Jeff and I, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer this. Uh, <laughs> you picked the question. I picked the question there. It was a slow week again. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. Does anyone want to want to start this one first? I already forgot what the question was. It was uh, you. If you had to write a will list, uh, what valuable possession would you give, and okay. who would take both of your your channels? Do I, wait. Do I have to give <laughs> the valuable possession to the person to take my channel? I guess so. I guess we can just answer the valuable possession part because the channel part yeah. is it just gets too messy. Yeah, valuable possession. Um. I don't really have that many valuable possessions. Yeah. To be I give honest. My YouTube play button to uh <laughs> to Jeff. To the to, person you give the channel to. Right, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> give it give it to Jeff. Yeah. I'll take it. Um mm. that seems like you're giving me like motive to kill you now though. No. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't well, I did just get a uh canon eos r so i'll just give that to my brother and he can use it as a webcam for all his twitch streams yeah because i don't think he's really interested in photography cool yeah <laughs> when I... like, he, he kind of was just like <laughs> you're like uh son Here's a movie collection. <laughs> Here's Ishtar on Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you did lean really hard into the physical media thing, so now you have to just, even if you are like, yeah, streaming's better, you have to be like, nah, it's all about physical media. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're like, trust me, it, it's like people who love vinyl. You're like, you can hear the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, but when the internet goes out, I can still watch it. <laughs> All right, Karsten, what, we got one last Yeah, question? we got one left. Uh, this one is, who are some of your, well, it comes from Roller Skate Butterfly, and it is, who are some of your favorite comedians and specials? Um. Uh, so, my favorite comedian, like, I, I, cause I haven't listened to a lot of, like, new comedians in the last, like, five years. Mm-hmm. Um, the So, like, when I was in high school, my favorite comedian was Demetri Martin, and I, I think Demetri Martin still holds up. Yeah. I was gonna say Dimitri Martin to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just say uh, Dimitri Martin for my favorite comedian. But my favorite special as of recent is this is it one. Nanette? Huh? Have you heard it? Okay, I thought you were. I was just guessing what you were gonna say. Oh, I think yeah, no. Nanette, like uh, by Hannah Gadsby. Oh uh, yeah, that one was really good. Okay, so that's my favorite special of the last like few years nice mine is uh my favorite shapes or something from yeah my favorite shapes from uh julio torres he is uh one of my favorite comedians right now he's super weird and yeah it's on hbo if anyone's curious but what about you Mm, yeah Mm. nice yeah the just the vibes of like listening to mitch hedberg it's just like a very calming thing to do yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah um jeff real quick do you like stephen wright at all or i have never really listened to stephen wright okay i just know because he's like dimitri martin before dimitri martin and i got really into him after i got into dimitri martin and i was just had to Mm -hmm. i'll have to i'll have to see next time when i drive from florida (laughs) to chicago i'll have to just throw tons of like comedy on yeah music yeah well steven writes very sleepy because it's 20 hour drive (laughs) yeah yeah um wait do you say sleepy yeah his his comedy is very sleepy so i don't know if it's the best driving drive (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah 
Um, cool. Well, that does it for questions. We can get into our wrap up. Um, yeah, we'll let Kevin go back to his family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot to wrap up this week. Uh, we won't force Kevin to sit through the patron names. I will add those in in post. As promised, here's the patron section. If you would like to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash carscast where you can get exclusive access to bonus episodes, Q&As, shoutouts at the end of every episode, and much, much more. And without any further ado, here's that shoutout. Uh, thank you, Addison Ware, Allison Grace, Annabelle Falk, Ben Chow, Bex, Blake Root, Boat, Brandon Yu, Brock Schultz, Camilla, Eden, Fozzie Bear, Grant Gao, Hannah E., Harry Remedianakis. Help. How do I change my profile name i'm very confused please send help i am in dire need iron tusk 93 it's me luke hillis i'm back bitches uh iva Jaden easton jacob colmas jane v john van hout joshua kriswicki kara m katie t kaylee patney liqui live rob lucian vicina martin def martina mary lee borslow micah simmons michael decker monroe page parks riley ost uh, Robert Burke, Saba, Sam Farr, Sophia Arieta, Super Cali, Fragilistic, Expialidocious, Smitty Werbin, Jaggerman, Jensen, Taylor Hardy, 10 billion, this podcast. Peer pressured me into getting a letterbox. Tom Lakes Beans, Vegard Strom, Vera S, William Fontaine, Jalbert, uh, Page Twos, uh, Xavier Fossier, Yoki Sasquatch, and Yusef A. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. And also, I don't think we have a movie for next week yet. We right, don't. Jeff? We do not talk yeah. about it. I mean, we're, <laughs> so, there's going to be one. We just there will be one. Yet. Yeah, it'll be. It's to be determined. Oh wait, is Brandon on next week? Brandon's on next week. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll ask him. Yeah, we'll ask um, him. But we do have a review. We read a review every week just to encourage you guys to leave reviews. Um, and I have one pulled up. Just give me a. <laughs> Like, didn't have it pulled up clearly. Just had so much anticipation. In your yeah, uh, this one came from uh, Kale Whale out of the USA, five stars, and it reads: uh, to, piggyba- to piggyback off another review, I also mainly listen to these on dog walks of my 14-pound dog that do, in fact, last 90 minutes. He's bulking up. I play it at <laughs> 1.5 speed, and it's always done in under an hour, leaving me bored and restless. So I formally request that the Cars Cast extend the runtime. Anyway, this is a great podcast that always makes me laugh out loud and my neighbors uh, to question why I am laughing on the street. Thank you, Jeff and Karsten. So that's... Uh, okay, I have uh, a couple <laughs> just things, quick things about that, yeah. and then we'll, we'll end this. All right. But if yeah. you're complaining that it's too short, why are you playing it at 1.5 times speed? <laughs> it would be yeah, long enough true. if you that just didn't true. do that. And also, are we only funny because our voices are like higher pitched because it's at, at 1.5 times speed? That is true, yeah. Wait, does that happen when you play a podcast at 1.5 times speed? I don't know, but I do know it's really funny when you play a podcast at 0.5 speed, which is an option, and everyone sounds like they're drunk out of their minds. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, thank you, Kale Whale, for the lovely review. Um, Um, The last thing... Before I think we get into our like actual being done, Kevin, you have admitted that you have listened to this podcast. <laughs> I think you're our first guest ever <laughs> to listen to the podcast. <laughs> uh, what would your quick review be in like one sentence of the podcast? Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we'll close our eyes. <laughs> we'll plug our ears. <laughs> With my AirPods underneath? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you the Honestly, weirdest possible question. <laughs> we'll put, like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. One star. That's the pull quote for our podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah um yeah cool well well if again we'll open it up if uh we'll just thank you thanks again for being on kevin again if you have anything else to plug now is the time but, uh, <laughs> he's just gonna plug another charity yeah another charity <laughs> um but yeah thanks for being on uh yeah good to see you i haven't like seen you physically in a while yeah so yeah sure
<laughs> yes. <laughs> if, if we need someone who knows a lot about movies on a movie podcast, you're the guy. We'll let you know. You're, um, you are our number one call. Jeff, do you have anything else to say? Uh, catch you on the flip side. Catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Is it you? You say it now? Yeah. Flip side. <laughs>